Hey everybody, welcome to day 103 on the CDT. Um, it's actually light outside a little bit. It's about 8.45, but I figured I'd put the headlamp on so you could actually see me. It was a little grainy without it. Um, so Marty and I are in Yellowstone. Uh, we hiked in today. Um, it was about eight miles until we got to the border, which we enter the border on the CDT at um, Fox Park or Fox Creek. Um, I've seen it written both ways. I think the campsite is Fox Creek. Um, it might like maybe the ranger station, maybe Fox Park, um, but it's basically on the south side of Yellowstone. And we followed the Snake River for most of the day and hiked about 14 miles into the park. Um, I think, let's see. Yeah, I think it was about 14 and a half miles into the park. Um, we're camping in, so it's right by the Hart River and uh, the Hart Lake. So it's, um, <clears throat> the campsite we're in actually, it just got removed. Um, or relocated, I should say, not removed. Um, the relocation was because of uh, bears. At the previous site, there was a bear that kept visiting. So they decided to go ahead and relocate um, the campsite this year. And <clears throat> so Marty and I are at uh, 8J3. It used to be um, a little bit further north, and it's known as the Surprise Creek campsite. So this is the first night in Yellowstone. Um, we'll hike to Moose Creek, and Moose Creek has two campsites. I think we're at M2, um, or 8M2, I believe is maybe the number. I'll verify that tomorrow. Um, after Moose Creek, we actually hike into Old Faithful Village to do a resupply, and then we keep on hiking out to Summit Lake, which is on the western side of the park. So... We're coming in from the south to Old Faithful Village, and then we'll change directions to the west. I have to see where Cody, Wyoming, the entrance from Cody, Wyoming for the park is. I can't remember if it's on the south side or the east side. If it's on the east side, I think I've been to the four corners of the park, um, or at least four sides of it. Um, we're in the south side today. If Cody's on the east, um, I actually hiked the Gallatin skyline with my friend Charlie in 2008. And that is on the way north side of the park. It's actually on the park boundary and also um, skips between Wyoming and Montana. So that's on the way north side. And then on the CDT, we'll actually exit west. One thing that I wasn't planning on is um, West Yellowstone. I wasn't going to resupply there. Um, it's a really touristy place and it can be expensive. Um, Two things may change that. Uh, first, I think Marty was planning on resupplying there. So he didn't have to do a large carry from Old Faithful Village to uh, Lima, Montana. Um, so if he's going to resupply, I might dip in. And I think the primary reason I would dip in is I'm trying to remember if West Yellowstone is where the huge arch is that has the quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Um, that was basically christened for for Yellowstone. Um, so I'll have to, when I'm an old faithful, I'll Google that to see if, if that's where the arch is because it'd be fun to see that arch. The second thing that might drive it is we are talking to a southbounder today and found out that the post office in uh, Old Faithful um, may be closed. It's a temporary closure. Um, essentially... I guess the people who used to run it or ran it um, retired and the post office is trying to get a contract or the park is trying to get a contract in place to uh, reopen it. And the comments in our navigation app has said, like on the 15th, they said, you know, they expected it to reopen by the 1st of August. And then a comment from the 29th of July said it'll be a couple weeks. So we're in the 8th of July on this Monday. So I'm not sure if they have a contract in place for the post office and if it's reopened. If it hasn't reopened, I think uh, packages are going to Mammoth. And um, I'm not sure if they're, they're actually bringing packages up to through hikers or not. 
if they're not, then I may have to forward that package to West Yellowstone and then in Old Faithful grab a couple days of food from the grocery store um, to get me to Old or to West Yellowstone and then um, I can pick up my box at the post office. So I'll have to see once we get into Old Faithful Village, Marty and I will have to see what, what's going on. Um, today was beautiful. Um, parks, national parks are put in place for various reasons. And sometimes they're there to protect a very specific um, feature uh, or heritage. It could be a cultural resource or a natural resource. But a lot of times when parks are put in place, um, they're protecting not only that one thing or maybe a couple things, um, but they usually have land that goes around them. And <clears throat> Yellowstone has a huge falls, it has the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, it has the geysers, and it has the bison. It protects the wolves, it protects the grizzlies. So there's all sorts of reasons for Yellowstone. But one of the things that we got to see today, which I was really excited to see this side of the park because I hadn't been to this side of the park, was um, once we got past the Snake River, or mostly past the Snake River, we were walking across this huge meadow, just absolutely gorgeous meadow. There were trees on a, in a hill on one side, there were trees on the other side, and in the middle is just this wide sweeping meadow. And I think Marty and I had maybe three miles across this thing. Maybe it's four, or maybe it's two and a half. I don't know. It, it, it took us a little while to get across the meadow. So I want to say it was between three or four miles. Um, maybe two and a half to three and a half, something like that. And I, as I walked across the meadow, I noticed that hey, there's sagebrush on the left. And the sagebrush looks a lot like walking across the Great Basin in southern Wyoming. The difference is there's flowers, like wildflowers and grass and different plants um, growing all over the meadow. Uh, they're growing all the way underneath and up to the sagebrush. And they're growing across the, the floor of the meadow all the way over to the trees on the other side. And... It dawned on me, there's no grazing allowed here. It's a park. It's a national park. The only grazing is going to be wildlife. And I am a supporter of using public lands um, for, I mean, whether it's products or services, whatever it is. So, for example, U.S. forests. Like, we have to thin the forests. If we don't thin the forests, fires are bad. Um, you know, they become hot canopy fires. So they need to be cleaned. And one way to clean them is to thin out the trees and sell the, the timber. And you can use that timber for, you know, whatever building you need to build or structure or whatever it is, a bench. Um, Bureau of Land Management land is used a lot of times for grazing. And that's great because cattle and other livestock need to graze and sometimes, or a lot of times, the ranchers don't have enough land to, to graze their, their stock. And so they can use Bureau of Land Management lands, BLM lands, to graze. Um, Overgrazing or, you know, clear cutting, um, where we're, we're basically abusing the land, I don't agree with. And when we were walking across the Great Basin, there was nothing but sagebrush. Like, you could tell that, like, the plants or the other plants and grass and that kind of stuff have been eaten to the nub in most cases. Some of that's going to be lack of water, right? Some of that's going to be the fact that the Great, ba the Great Basin just doesn't have enough water. It gets really, really hot. It's no, There's no shade, so it's just getting baked. And some of those plants, like some of those flowers or grasses, can't grow. And uh, I think another part of it is the fact that it's, it's getting grazed and maybe overgrazed. I don't know. I haven't been in Wyoming long enough to make that call. But walking through the meadow today just reminded me why we have national parks. It's not only because of the special features that the parks have, but <clears throat> preserving lands around there allows us to see the land in its natural setting. And I got to see a meadow with sagebrush, just like the Great Basin. However, there were grasses, there were flowers, there were other plants all over uh, that whole meadow and it was absolutely beautiful. 
Um, Marty and I actually took a break there. I think it was 15, 20 minute break. And just sitting, like I was sitting in the plants um, because they were everywhere. You couldn't help but sit in the plants. And I was just looking across this meadow and looking around and it was peaceful. It was absolutely beautiful. I actually half expected um, like a moose or an elk or a grizzly bear or a black bear or something to just come moseying across the meadow at any time. So that was the first day of Yellowstone was just walking, walking through or by along, I guess we were along the Snake River for many, many miles. And then getting to walk across this just huge, beautiful meadow filled with flowers and plants and um, butterflies, bugs, all sorts of stuff were, were in the meadow. Uh, one other thing we did pass by, it was actually many, many miles. It looked like there was a really nasty burn um, that had swept through the park and it, had, it must have been very hot because it, it appeared to kill most of the vegetation and um, and the trees and uh the trees were having difficulty growing back thankfully f some f you know wildflowers and other um plants along the ground had grown so like erosion and that kind of stuff wasn't occurring um for the most part and some some little trees were starting to grow but um it must have been i, I don't know maybe there's multiple fires but it appeared to be like the age of the fires looked around the same time so it must have been a massive fire. And one of the, th sorry for moving the camera. One of the things that the park service is trying to do is let wildland fire, like natural wildland fire burn to clean off the lands because a low heat fire is, um, is healthy. It regenerates vegetation. Um, it kills off, um, you know, dead or dying trees. Just make sure that they're burned. It also burns, um, like the debris on the ground. And so uh, I know that <clears throat> many parks have changed their policy of instead of putting out fires, they, they now let them burn. Um, again, if it's, you know, if it's within reason. So just the ecology that we got to see today was, was kind of fun. Um, I'm excited to see tomorrow. We're actually going to see a bit of the heart of the park so we're coming in from the south but we're going to start moving towards the central part of um of the park we'll cross the highway that goes up to grant village and then we'll keep hiking north we'll hike by um i think it's witch witch creek or witch creek which is actually um a hot spring the water itself is like 100 degrees um we'll hike by heart lake and I can't remember what's north of Heart Lake. I think there's another lake we are going south of, um, but we'll hit Mitch Creek about that time. So I'll give you an update tomorrow. Um, I think that's it for Yellowstone. It was, it was a, it was a fun hiking day. Um, I'm glad I'm here, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next, uh, basically two two and a half days in the park. And just getting to see the different areas of the park. Um, we didn't see a grizzly, didn't see a wolf, didn't see a black bear. Um, no large animal, um, you know, what elk, elk moose or anything. Um, so we'll see if we get to see some other big animals um, over the next two and a half days. Everyone have a nice evening. Thanks for watching the videos. I hope everyone's healthy and safe. And uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye.